Scotland, 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 Scotland. Why? Why, 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 why did that have to happen? Right, okay. I'm, I'm buzzing for Ukraine. Excellent. Well done. If somebody, if a country deserves this, it's Ukraine. But they just don't get this tonight based on everything that they're going through and you know, everybody having so much sympathy for them. They were the better team tonight against Scotland. Scotland didn't show up. So that wasn't the Scotland that we saw at the Euros. I think there was the lack of Kieran Tierney. But we didn't get the best version of these players. What, why is that? Is For me, looking at that game, I'm like, OK, we know from social media, we know from media outlets that players are now on this downtime. You know, this is their end of the season. It's... The holiday is the time to switch off. It's finding that balance between getting that downtime and coming back for a major qualifier like this. They have missed out on the World Cup at Qatar. Fresh from the Euros. Like, Scotland haven't been present for such a long time. They haven't qualified for a World Cup since 98. So you don't expect them to just walk back in after the Euros last year and, and qualify for the World Cup. I don't expect that either, but what I expect to see is progress. And it feels like tonight was a step backwards. It feels like tonight we were lacking that that power, that attack, that passion, shall we say, that, that we got to see, you know, on those occasions for the Euros. And and I'm just absolutely gutted, don't get me wrong. I'm pleased for you, Ukraine and Scotland are gonna look like the bad guys tonight in a way, but they had a job to do and that was to win. And Ukraine were, they were, they were brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. I mean, Zinchenko, what a player. You know, looking ahead to this game and seeing him in the press conference doing his interviews and reduced to tears thinking about his country and saying how when you're young, you dream. You dream of being at the World Cup and going to World Cups. And the young people in our country now are just dreaming that war will be over. And his performance tonight his country, his people will be so proud of him and he could be so proud of himself. I just, I wish we could say more about the Scotland team tonight and I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but there were so many players just not, not at their top of the game. Grant Hanley had a few howlers. Um, he wasn't the best that I've seen him, but the person to most, I think, disappoint our team tonight was Andy Robertson. We know the Andy Robertson of Liverpool. We know what he can do. We know how he can change a game. We know how he can impact things. And I don't think he was quite on his game at all tonight. Now, there was the debate on social media between fans and uh, the press looking ahead to this game that Andy Robertson at the Liverpool parade uh, on the weekend uh, had a beer. And what did that say four days before a qualifier? And I have no problem with that. It's his downtime. It's one beer. He's an extremely fit person, extremely dedicated. I can't imagine a couple of beers is going to change that overnight. But then the, how, how that's portrayed in the media a few days before a game, how that changes things for you, how the pressure turns on, how you need to perform your absolute best, how maybe your, your judgment then is clouded because you're thinking of other things. I just know that Andy Robertson doesn't play that like that for Liverpool and tonight he was a massive disappointment. But we've seen the best of him, you know, we, we, we know what you can do. It's an off night, but you can't give away these opportunities. These are the nights that you have to just step up. And there was moments where you thought, oh my God, Scotland are going to do it. Yarmolenko with that first goal, Yarmachuk with a second goal. And then when it was 2-0, there was that moment, a moment where you thought Super John McGinn's going to do it. A beautiful ball in from Christie, and John just takes that half a second too long and, and puts it on his head and it, and it just goes past the post and it was like, my God, uh, how, how, did, how, how did that not go in? How did it not go in? I'm still thinking about it now. Headbutts the grass, the frustration, but okay, we got there, started getting at the final third. This is what we need to be doing more of. I thought Shea Adams, who again, I think is a, a powerful unit, uh, a talented player, wasn't sharp tonight. He didn't seem to have the, the game of his life either. He didn't seem comfortable. There was a lot of hesitation. Did you feel that as well? I just, I just, it, it wasn't there. And he, he wasn't getting those moments that he should have been getting. I thought 
Ukraine were all over us at times. Certainly the first half, we didn't get a look in. But the second half, that's where you start to see that shift. That's where you know, right, Scotland can do what Scotland can do. Very, you know, classic Scotland fashion, but they can do this. You know, you're at Hamden, there's 60,000 fans there. Like, this is your night to then get through this stage. You're one game away to play Wales. I watched Wales tonight in the Nations League, you know, against Poland and, you know, Wales were the better team in the first half. It was 1-0, I think, from 60 minutes and then Poland going to win 2-1. Dan James, Kiefer Moore, brilliant. They looked absolutely excellent tonight. They came off at half time. Um, but they will be playing on, they'll be playing on Sunday, absolutely no doubt. Rob Page is planning that team to probably go up against Scotland, but the chance is now gone. But Ukraine tonight, you, you can't you can't say, you know, they deserved it based on what their country's going through, based on the fact that we all have huge amounts of sympathy and respect for their country. They were by far the better team tonight and Scotland didn't step up. Um, OK, it went 2-1. Uh, thanks to Callum McGregor. Well, it was, a, it was a bit of a goalkeeping error, shall we say, from um, Ukraine. But see when that, it, it, it just went over the line and you know then it's the goal, how that shift in mentality comes in. And you've got Callum McGregor there. OK, he's got his mask on. You know, I, I quite like watching him play with the mask, actually. I think it adds something. Um, and the, the change in the atmosphere, the, the shift, and you think Scotland can do this. This is absolutely what Scotland can do. And it just isn't coming. You know, it just, it's just not coming. And I just find it so frustrating knowing that, and of course they will as well, but John McGinn just missing that goal. It's like, in another life, it was it was going in. It's just, it's gone. I don't think Stuart Armstrong was, was quite the way he could have been as well. I think he made a couple of mistakes. Grant Hanley had a bit of a bad night as well. And yeah, not that you were ever going to put the blame on anyone whatsoever, but Andy Robertson wasn't the Andy Robertson that we know he can be. And Scotland made it easy, easy for Ukraine in that first half. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But for them to get a third goal in the dying seconds of the game, you know, I, you can see at that point that, that Scotland are dropping off. They're not even, they're not, they, they know, they know what's happening. They know it's going to go 3-1. You know, they've, they've blown it. Um, but that's where you see a team that they, they're out there to win. They're, they're, they're going for it. They're going all the way. And that was Ukraine tonight. I mean, Zinchenko, the feet on that lad, to see him, the way you saw him in that press conference yesterday, to step up the way he did today. That is willpower, mentality, mental strength. <sighs> Honestly, take a bow. Absolutely incredible stuff. I don't expect Scotland to rock up to every tournament after being away for so long, but when they were decent at the Euros, when you get to the Euros, you need to step up at that next major and make sure you qualify. Don't expect you to go on and win the World Cup, but qualification is everything because that is progress. This is a huge step back for Scotland and Steve Clark. What does this mean for him now? What does it mean for the side? They miss Kieran Tierney tonight, but otherwise we know that that Scotland team can be better. And we're not there. We miss out on the World Cup and we will be watching from home as everyone else enjoys Qatar in the winter sunshine. Unlucky Scotland. Congratulations, Ukraine. Well done. We're the winners tonight.